there guys and welcome back. So today we are going to look at the Hornby Class 66. Now if you saw my video from last week where I did the shop tour um, of my local Muller shop this is exactly where I picked it up from towards the end of the video. So yes that wasn't just a little bit of the video I was actually looking for one of these when I went. And I do have one of these already but it's a few years old and I absolutely love it to bits. So I thought, you know what? I really want to add another one to my collection. And I was thinking about another Colas because, you know, I really like delivery, but I thought, you know what? Let's go for something different. So this is a newer livery. I haven't seen this one um, before, uh, apart from, like I said, on Hornby's website. Um, I don't think this was available when I got mine. So I was super excited to find this one and yeah so I thought with getting it last week I thought you know what it'd be so great just to get straight in there to dive in and let's get a review on this and again I do have especially running wise a lot of high hopes for this model. So let's talk about price now then on Hornby's website this is £90.99. And I was lucky enough when I went to my retailer that um, I got this for £85. So that is a nice little bit of a saving. And for the size of this model and what you get, I actually believe you know that this is quite a reasonable price. Now, so let's have a look at the packaging. So as usual, I've kind of taken everything out the models out to one side. On the outside you get this a wonderful sleeve which surrounds the box as you'll see behind as I'm just moving it around. You have got detail about the loco itself and on the back. I don't know if you want to pause that and have a read. And this is a nice, I always like these little covers that Harmony do. I think this is a great, um, a great little touch. Let's get this out of the way. And then we get into just Hornby standard bo box packaging, really. You've got your, sorry for the light, I really, really can't. I am going to sort some better lights out one day. Um, but, yeah, you've just got your standard Hornby, let's see if I can get this out, your block of ice packaging, and then obviously the loco is in this inside, and then you've got the box. You don't have any of the fancy... Um, foam or anything like that but for what it is it does do the job and especially in these times I suppose there is one thing that you could say is that if you don't wish to keep the box all of this is recyclable so thinking about the earth as well so that's a good thing always so let's get this out of the way and let's have a look at the actual model itself alrighty so here we have the actual model itself and let's just get straight into this it does really look very very nice and this is a railroad model as well so with the detailing on this and especially with that livery on the side that is really nicely put on and again this is a railroad model and i think this really really does look uh great seeing this is supposed to be a bit more of like the uh like the cheaper range um that hornby do so again this looks great so let's have a look from one side and we'll work our way around so as we can see we've got the separate glaze in there we don't have separately fitted um wipers on the front they are just kind of molded and then the, the moldings carried on into the glazing but if you do look they do i don't know if you can tell on there but it isn't just like clear they have picked out when they've been painting the wipers so that's a nice little touch as well so as you can see on the front we've got the running number we've got a little bit of separately fitted detail here and then we've got the lights painted on the front and they've actually been done quite nice and a good thing that I think with this model is if you are good um, with electrics and things like that this could be super super easy to put those lights in and I believe I have seen a couple of kits floating around. Um, so yeah, that could be really, really good. So let's just turn this model around. 
And as we're looking at it, again, we've got the really nice number on the side, again with the glazed windows with the edgings picked out. Now let's have a look at these handles. No, these ones aren't separately fitted, but I will show if I do this and put my finger behind there, you can see that these for sure are separately fitted. And then let's try the buffers. I'm not expecting it, but yeah. These are just um, solid buffers. They're not springy, but again, it is a railroad model. And as we work our way around, we've got the nice steps picked out on the side. We've got the grill, we've got that, like I said, that wonderful, wonderful livery on the side. And I'm actually not sure whether this is a label that's been fitted afterwards. But yes, I think I think we can see there, because if you look at this, it's like a bit of a, like a, a bubble here. And, oh, that's not good. <clears throat> Yeah, that is my fault, but as you can see, as I put my nail up to that there, that has actually gone through. So unfortunately, yeah, that's not the uh, the best way for for delivery really, just popping a sticker over the side of it. And yeah, I will, I'm afraid I'm going to have to fix that after. And yeah, that is a little bit of a shame that to be honest. But with that being said, if uh, you do look at the rest of it, it is really well applied onto model. It's just a shame about that one little bit there. But again, this could just be a little thing on my model. So let's move in on. We have got the sides. Go around to the back of the train. You can see we've got a little bit of detail picked out again. We've got a really nice livery applied here on the side. And if we can get a little bit closer, I don't know if the camera will pick that up. But you've even got your little warning signs. And again on the top. Again, this is just the same as the other side. And then you've got the really nice grill effect. Again, on the roof. And let's have a bit of a closer look at the livery on this side. Now, see, this side appears to be quite well fitted. So, yeah, it is a slight shame about that little bubble, but it's um, probably a little bit of my fault for, for poking at it. But, again, you would expect that it would be fitted, you know, properly and quality checked on the model sort of thing. But... For me, I, you know, if you have that, so let's just go back around to this side again. Do apologise. If you've got that running sort of thing, you know, I can't really notice that. So, and I'm sure that we'll see that way down the railway. But, uh, but yeah, so it's not too bad. So let's have a look at the top. As we can see, we've got a great bit of detail in here. We've got quite a bit of riveting on the top as well to show all the different panels. You've got the exhaust there. You've got more panels on the top. I'm guessing they're likes of access panels. They kind of like a radiator grill on the side there as well. And that really does look good. So yeah, so that one little bit aside, this really is a great looking model. And I will say one thing. When I very first got one of these, I was kind of, because obviously if you've got like a steam loco, you, you, it's very obvious which way it's meant to run forward. Um, and I don't know whether it was just me being a bit daft on my part, but I thought actually, which way do we kind of need to run this? And basically this is your exhaust here and this is the back of your exhaust from what I read. So basically your model should be going in that direction for forwards, that direction for backwards. I know that's not on the not much with the detail, but it's just something that I thought, hey, you may want to know. So that is the model in general. And again, yeah, I can't really see that uh, that little bit. Yeah, it's just a tiny bit there, but we'll get that sorted, and that's no no uh, no big deal really. But apart from that, especially for railroad, it is a great looking model, and I really can't wait to see this going down on the track.
Okay, so let's have a look at the features of this. So we do have our little bag here, but we'll move that to one side just for a second. Now, with this, we unfortunately, as some people do hate them, we have the traction tyres. So I'm kind of on the fence about these. They never give me any trouble, but I do understand why people don't like them. So that's kind of a, uh, yeah, that's kind of like a bit of a niche area sort of thing. Uh, carrying on underneath, we've got the separately fitted NEM pockets here, so these can just lift out and slide back in if anything happens to them. And you obviously that's really good because it means that, unlike some like of the very old models, it does mean that you can replace them if needed. Now, one thing I am going to do um, is, especially compared with that 37, is a well, I suppose you could call it a feature. The bodies on these are so easy to remove. So let me just see if I can do that and just show you for a second. And you can quite literally do this with your fingernail. So there we have the body off. And then underneath you have your decoder socket. And one thing about this is this model weighs an absolute ton which is great and that is because let's see if we can get a close-up on this you have all that amount of weight right in the middle there now obviously yes I mean a, a die cast chassis will be better you know for a lot more natural weight than just like you know them kind of fix where they are but I will say one thing about this being like this and that is compared to the class 37 which had no weight in this whatsoever this does mean that this can pull or has the potential to pull a lot more it doesn't feel like it's going to struggle um, because it is so light and if memory serves me right I'm hoping a lot for this motor um, because it is such a better motor and better mechanism than that class 37 so let's just quickly get that body back on like that and again you can see how super easy it is to fit that body and let's just push this to the back and we will have a look at this and this is where I think this is great especially for a um, railroad model because we have all these various little pipes and couplings to go with it we've got a pair of buffers bumpers whatever you'd like to call them that can be fitted front or rear and these have a really nice little bit of detail on the edges on them but also with this one and i haven't come across this in my other models sorry i'm just tidying up as we go Let's just pop this back on there to one side. This has metal etched nameplates. Now look at that. And again, this is a railroad model with a little bit of something else. And I think that is a really, really great touch for this. So yeah, I think that is really, really nice little touch to include with that. So there we have the model yeah, so that's about it really for everything I think we've covered everything so let's have a quick look at the manual and then hopefully at that point we can then get this down onto the track right okay so here we have the wonderful Hornby manual now I still hold a candle to the dapper ones um, especially with the colour booklet with all the parts and stuff like that so you have the class 5966 uh, let's open up this as you can see it's showing you your lubrication points it's showing you your extra detail pack how to remove the body and like we saw there is your DCC socket which I, I wasn't sure if you saw properly but if you didn't see that is an 8 pin um, decoder and what I will say, if you go back through my videos, um, I will put a link again because I don't have that many up on the channel yet. But on my other Class 66, I mean, I won't pop it on today while I'm running this one. Obviously, the focus is on this model. 
um, I do have a video where I fitted uh, TTS sound onto that and it is so so easy to do with this model so go and give that a check out after uh, if you wish to possibly fit sound to this because it is again with the body with way everything's positioned it is really easy to do that and that's why again I think this is another great model especially to get started with for a freight model and then we've just got a few little details on the back so there we have it folks so that is everything what you get inside with the model and that is it so right let's not put this off anymore because i'm really excited for this bit let's get it down onto the track and let's see how this thing moves okay so here we have it down on the track and as you know from my other videos the lighting has changed and if i've got a good light then i do like to show these in a more natural lighting if i can rather than having the uh, the ring light on what i'm using to to film with for doing that more like detail stuff so let's have a look and let's see how this moves so we shall slowly turn the controller up and it is actually moving it's a little bit jerky but this is before i've even got to 20 percent on my controller and as again as always i'm using the gauge master series d controller so let's just turn that up as you can see that is at 20 and i will say compared to that 37 that is very smooth and a huge huge improvement already let's just stop that let's put it into reverse again i haven't touched the speed on the controller and just look at the difference in that and how wonderfully wonderfully smooth that is and i am going to have to to say i do think that this could be a better purchase already than that class 37 like i said i don't want to say too much negative about it because i do love the model i do enjoy the model but this one for a railroad you know it is built just that little bit extra um i think so yeah but anyway let's focus back on this so i turned up to about 30 and look at the difference in that that is already such a wonderful wonderful speed that that is moving out let's just follow it down slightly a little bit down the track that is a really really nice like freight kind of speed if you will let's just send it again turn it up a little bit more as you can see that looks so so nice going around the track and that little bubble bit before for me i can't even see that so i'm really really not bothered about that whatsoever again that's a great great looking model so right so i think what we'll do i think we'll cut it off there we'll put some freight on the back of this thing after that we shall do a bit of a summary and we'll finish it off from there i guess Okay. right okay so here we have it down and ready on the railway now i'm just going to lift you guys up for a second and just show you something so i've decided in the end if you follow it round the bend that i've put quite a decent rake of trucks on with this now i've done this for two reasons one i did off camera run it in to make sure it's perfectly safe to do so and two I don't mean to keep going back but just to show the difference between this model and that class 37 especially for around about a similar price too um, because this is just so much more of a model now that class 37 was pulling about six of the DAPAL tankers and don't get me wrong there is quite a decent amount of weight to them but with the trucks what are on here if I draw your eyes to them, these are heavier because these are loaded. Then I've got some Backman um, tankers at the back, which are quite heavy, about as heavy as these as well. So this is pulling a lot more of a heavier load. So let's set this one off. And as I'm sure you spot it in the background there, we've got my other Class 66. And that's moving the HST coaches kind of out the way sort of thing ready for the next schedule 
So let's get set this one off. Let's watch it around that curve. It is on um, the inner track and it's not the same track as I showed the last one. Um, but again, it's third radius curves and there's nothing different on this track compared to here. So let's just see the difference with it running. So we're going to set it off in the right direction to about 30%, 25-30% speed, which is about the same as what we did last time. I'm just going to move you guys over. So let's just have a look at this. And you can already see that this is so, so wonderfully smooth. And just look at that. There is an absolutely no problem with this pulling this absolutely immense load as you can see just the tail end of it there going round it's not slowing down it isn't growling or anything like that and it just shows how fantastic this model is so what we'll do we'll set off the other one which we'll do that now and you'll just start to see that one moving and I'll tell you what let's just show you this one coming round because I do love delivery on this one and then what we'll do, we'll cut off, we'll cut to them both running around the track together and then we'll finish off and we'll do a little bit of a summary. Okay guys, so there we have it and I thought it would be really, really nice to finish off with both of these models like this. So you've got the really lovely Colas rail livery which I absolutely love and then you've got the newer GBRF with the tanker on the side and I think this is just a really, really nice way to finish off this video. So, my thoughts on this model. Now, let me try and find it. Where is it? There it is. This little nick here, what I will own up, I did by my own doing. No, do not let this put you off because for a railroad model, for a cheaper model, this is absolutely fantastic. It is such a great beginner's model. It's a great cheaper model. It runs so nice and smooth. You can do plenty with this with it being so easy to install sound, maybe even fit lights. And I have seen videos with lights fitting into these and these look really, really nice. So honestly, my recommendation for this is an absolute buy. This is such a great, fantastic model. There are so many different liveries that you can get it in. It looks fantastic on any layout and it doesn't matter if you are pulling like you know mixed coaches like I have here because yes I'm still trying to get a proper more modern set to go with this or if it is just shunting around some HST coaches this thing looks absolutely fantastic you know it's big for what you pay money wise it's got a great amount of weight to it it pulls no pun intended like an absolute freight train, even on a slower speed. It is just such, such, such a good model. And I really cannot recommend something like this enough. And yeah, I don't know what else I can say really. It is just an absolute fantastic model. So anyway, with that being said, you know, hopefully you guys have liked and enjoyed this video. If so, give me a big thumbs up underneath. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button and um, again that has been going so great to what I want to try and achieve recently so I'd absolutely 
love if uh, everybody who watches this can hit that subscribe that would be so so fantastic if you can do that and to anyone who's done that so far thank you so very very much because i didn't expect to be or you know have as many subscribers as i have since i started just about seven or eight months ago it's really has been absolutely brilliant and i'm enjoying this doing this so much and i hope you guys are as well so with me shutting up now and stop rambling on about things that are related to the model thank you very much for watching and hopefully we shall see you in the next video